Everybody thinks you live in a safe society. You go home at night, you think you're safe. But there are no safe places. Memories of two girls are frozen in time. It's a story we've closely followed for you for years. It started with a house fire. And then it was a murder. And then it was a double murder. And then it was a double murder and a house fire and two girls abducted. And that's what it is right now, almost two decades later. They can say what they want. There was nobody looking for the girls but my family. I guess at face value, it looks like a singular case, but we're only scratching the surface here. This place is a breeding ground for murder. First and foremost, I want to find the girls. That's my priority. Here we got the, the next thing would be to find out who did it and why. There needs to be a reckoning for that. There were leads available in the first 48 hours that were not pursued. Not that you were by any means, but what if you were a suspect? I should have been. Well, yeah. Do you think that the police, to the best of your knowledge, handled this investigation? I'm not going to answer that. There's more going on here than meets the eye. There's a whole different lens that opens up when we start talking about the sheer volume of violent criminals who are all operating at the same time within a 30-mile radius. What's that? That's a pretty young girl. Yeah. They ain't pretty when they cry. It's a brutal, terrifying place to live. I don't feel safe here. Well, you was in the beginning, but you've got too deep in it now. Whoever done this knows exactly who you are and what you're doing. morning of December 30th, a couple who lives nearby, they're on their way to work. They see some smoke in the distance, like kind of a glow. And we're thinking this is like 5.30, 6 a.m., somewhere in this window. And soon they find the Freeman's trailer is on fire. So they're like, what do we do? They go to the nearest neighbor's house. I believe the wife calls 911. The first to arrive is the Welch Fire Department. Next to arrive on scene is Craig County Sheriff's Department. Right, and the head of that department is Sheriff George Blunt. Do you remember what your first impressions were of the scene? Well, my undersheriff got there first, and he called me and told me, just, this looks suspicious. You better come up. So I said, OK. The Craig County Sheriff's Office gets there, and they see Laura's car. So the next step, of course, is to get a hold of Laura's family, see if maybe somebody knows where she is. Laura's mother, Lorene Bible, is a manager at a restaurant in Vanita. Sheriff's Office knows this. They dispatch a deputy down to Vanita to notify Lorene Bible. Troy Messick with the Sheriff's Department walked in and he said, Lorene, I need to talk to you. I said, OK. He says, do you know Ashley Freeman? I said, yes, that's my daughter Laura's best friend, and she stayed the night up there. He said, the house is on fire. I could tell by looking at his face that it wasn't on fire, that it was already done. You're talking winter time and wood stoves around here. A house fire is a pretty common thing at times, you know. It's not uncommon. And I said, did you find anybody? Mm-hmm. They'd found one person. And he said, well, if we hear anything, I'll call you. And then he left, and then I called Jay. He said, you need to get here. Freeman's house is total gone. They've only found one body. So we hightailed it to Welch. We've all taken our kids to slumber parties and dropped them off on a Friday night thinking everything's fine. 
and that we'll see them the next morning at nine o'clock. And then somebody walks in and tells Laureen at work that there was a fire and they don't know where the girls are. I, I, I just, it's unimaginable. Laureen calls Jay, and then he goes to pick her up at the restaurant in Veneta. And from there, they head directly north, about 20 miles back towards Welch. Right, and this is probably 9, 9.15 is when Jay and Laureen Bible arrive at the Freeman property. They make us stay a 1,000 foot down the, from where the house burned. Yeah. Everybody had to stay at the end of the driveway. So it was kind of aggravating to have to be down there wondering what's going on. And Well, most seeing... of them were sitting down. They were all sitting down. They'd already called in the OSBI. It was determined that OSBI should be called in. It was kind of the policy at that time, that any time there was something major like that, call in the OSBI. So the OSBI shows up at around 10 a.m. led by Agent Steve Nutter. And a search isn't done. The OSBI pull up in their car, get out, look around, and he said, well, we got to wait on the medical examiner. When did the medical examiner, Dr. Warren, arrive? 2 p.m. to imagine like what is going on this mother's head she knows her daughter was there the night before she can see her car sitting right there she's hearing that there's a body at this house she's seeing it it's smoking it's still smoking at this point but it, nobody will talk i mean they're just milling about but yeah. not coming to talk to them but then the medical examiner donna warren she shows up and uh you know loreen she knew who she was and she calls her over and she says, what's going on there? Now, of course, the, the medical examiner can't say anything officially, right. but she says, it's a woman, she's wearing a, a wedding band on, on her ring finger on her left hand, and she's, she's bore children. So Lorene knows it Presumably. couldn't be one of the girls. The mystery body has to be Kathy Freeman. Kathy was found in her bedroom, face down on the bed, but the waterbed had exploded in the fire and preserved her body from being burned completely. Kathy was my, was my number one person. If I needed anything, she would be there to do it. She would help me. And I helped her, we just, I helped her and she helped me. That's just the way it was. So if this is Kathy Freeman's body, then where the hell is everybody else? Right, I mean, this is terrible, obviously, that they have found the body of Kathy Freeman, but then we have at least three people unaccounted for. But ultimately, the medical examiner made a shocking determination. The fire isn't what killed Kathy Freeman. hung over this town for almost two decades. We need to find these girls and bring them home. Hell in the Heartland, new series, Sunday, June 2nd at 9 on HLN.